Wow, what an amazing day. We do have one more presenter, so I hope you'll stick around for the next person I'm going to introduce. Um, today was really filled with a lot of innovation and leadership talk, and it's really leading up and culminating to our final presenter um, in a lot of ways to show us what California is doing abroad. And when I say abroad, um, with external stakeholders, so thinking outside government and reaching out to our communities. Um, you'll recognize Kiss Regen um, as the director of the Governor's Office for Business and Economic Development, Go Biz. Um, but in a lot of ways, he's broader than that. Um, he's one of those unique individuals who brings a lot of perspectives to his job, both from the private sector and the public sector, including being an elected official, to be a champion for the state of California. He is a champion for job growth and economic development as he goes out and meets with the stakeholders throughout the state. And he's a champion for his staff through his visionary leadership. With that, please help me welcome Kish Rajin. Thanks, Paul. Thanks. Thanks. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. How y'all doing? You hanging in? We're going to get through this uh, last part uh, in just a few minutes, and then we're going to let y'all go out upon your evening. But uh, real quickly, though, how about a hand for Becca and for everybody that's been involved in organizing this outstanding <laughs> session? What a treat uh, that, that folks that have been able to uh, span certainly the entire day or even part of the day. This has been a remarkable group of speakers and presenters and leaders in our state and to be able to get them all in one session and to be able to hear from so many wise and accomplished and committed people talk about what leadership means to them, what innovation means to them, what uh, their role means today and going forward and how they're embracing the notion of innovation and change and collaboration so that we can go forward uh, in a more constructive way and deliver against those individual missions and our collective mission in a way that's renewed and effective and positive. Uh, to get that kind of insights from this group has been uh, really outstanding. And what I wanted to do is I'm just going to flip through uh, very quickly. I just wanted to touch on um, some of the highlights that uh, w came out of some of the talks or things that resonated with me and in, the, in some of the presentations that they offered. And then I'll offer a few words of my own and, um, and we'll be on our way. But uh, just sort of taking it chronologically, first from the beginning, the, the Dream Big California video is something that I see my friend Karen Fish in the back from Visit California. Something that we worked on together, Visit California with GoBiz and others putting together uh, a very brief piece that reminds everybody how wonderful this place in uh, California is in particular. You know, especially for me in the Office of Business and Economic Development, we have people all the time that are trying to run down California and talk about the fact that we've lost our way and that we no longer understand what it is to be uh, successful in business and that businesses should just move to all kinds of other places like Texas and other places where, you know, they're saying, hey, they figured it out and California's been left behind. Well, I can tell you that nothing could be further from the truth. When you talk to people around our great state, around our great country, and people around the world, when they think about the place on the planet that they want to go, so they can get a piece of inspiration and get a piece of something that will resonate with them and stir inside of them and get them motivated and fired up to achieve all the things that they dream about. When they think about dreaming big, California continues to be the place, the one place on the planet that they think, if I can go there, I can achieve my dreams or I'll have a shot at them. So that video did a, fa a fabulous job and it's why we're excited to continue to be able to display it. Uh, Ann Stosball came in, who is the, the CEO of this great organization here at Cal CalPERS. Um, she did a fabulous job and, you know, I think she reminded folks that, you know, uh, a lot of people can think about the bureaucracy of this organization or any other organization. They can think about CalPERS and the fact that it's one of the biggest, if not the biggest pension fund uh, in the country, one of the biggest public funds uh, in the world. And it, it, it's, it's all about numbers, it's all about math, it's all about accounting and actuarials and you look at sort of the details of what the mission of this organization is. But she reminded us that it's about people that these are about the health benefits and about the, uh, the ongoing pension benefits, the retirement of people that have given so much to public service and across a multi-generational responsibility that PERS lives up to every day to execute its mission uh, in thinking about the impact on those people and those families and the obligation that we as a society owe to them because of the service that they gave uh, in the work that they did on behalf of the state of California. So I thought that it was important for her to ground her notion of leadership in that most important human aspect of what PERS is all about. Linda Ng uh, came in and did a wonderful job 
Uh, I love the words that she used, challenge, build, transform, and thrive. That's what I took away when she was thinking about what leadership is. We have to challenge ourselves. We have to challenge one another. We have to challenge the notions of the conventional and think of ways to innovate, to innovate and change. And then we have to build from that. And through that building, once we've embraced that, that notion of, of, of accepting that challenge, and that's how we can transform ourselves and, and we'll thrive from there. I thought that was particularly poignant. Uh, Paul came up and uh, did an outstanding job and talked a lot about uh, key elements of leadership, everything. Uh, you know, that you look at, at, at the, the, you can break it down into the structural and then HR and political and symbolic. I think it's important to understand that there are those multiple dimensions of leadership and we have to try to understand those and thrive in each of those areas and then integrate those elements into a stronger position of leadership. And certainly creativity and innovation are essential uh, because as he said, curiosity, right, is the foundation of a leadership style. And if you're curious, and you're trying to think of new ways and better ways. When you look at the mission that you have, but you think, dream about what's possible, it's if you follow that curiosity and you inspire yourselves, then to put it into the structure that he mentioned, the HR, the political, and the symbolic, then you can really advance and transform leadership. I thought that was uh, particularly uh, interesting as well. Martin Hoshino came. His video, of course, was amazing. And, and uh, he did talk about, and Becca reminded us, that he talked about the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. And I suppose you can't argue that from a mathematical perspective, but I don't think you can argue it about the, the notion of, of teamwork, the notion of people coming together and pulling together in one direction. It does produce something that indeed is bigger than the sum of those individual parts. There's a magic to that. Uh, for those of us that are San Francisco Giants fans, you know what I'm talking about. Um, Secretary Laird came in and, and um, he talked about his mission and his leadership. Uh, over the Department of Natural Resources, and he reminded everybody that there's a mission there that is incredibly vital, incredibly valuable. That's protecting California's natural resources. And when I talked a few minutes ago about why people love California, why California is indeed this special place, there's an alchemy here, as was put so beautifully in the video, that's unique to just about any place on the planet. It has a lot to do with our people. It has a lot to do with our history and our traditions and our cultures and our aspirations. But a lot of that is because of the undeniably amazing natural resources that California possesses. There is something fundamental about the natural state of California that is unique and different, and it provides itself a foundation that I think translates into inspiration, that uh, whether it be in business or culture or society in other ways. So I thought the fact that he was grounded in that um, and talked about how leadership flows from that grounding is something that uh, is a reason he's a great secretary and that um, I thought his comments were we're, uh, we're right on point. Um, from there, Secretary Ross came in, and I think very consistent with what I just said about Secretary Laird, Secretary Ross, also overseeing agriculture, also understands that California is in an incredibly unique position. We have a unique opportunity being one of the largest producers of food and agricultural products in the world. And I can tell you that when you think about it from an economic standpoint, it's extraordinary what California's business possibilities are as it relates to being a producer and an exporter of food. But food is not just a business. Food is a way that people and societies and cultures and families all around the world are nourished. Their families are dependent upon the quality of the nutrition that comes out of what California is so known for producing. For those of us that have had the pleasure of traveling in places around the world, uh, China, for instance, comes to mind with an incredibly uh, rapid growing population, people that have amazing ambitions and aspirations for their families, as all people do around the world. And yet China recognizes that all of a sudden with the wealth that they have, the access to information that they have, they know that the food that they have in China in many cases is something that they have some concerns with. And they want increasingly an increasing demand for the food that comes to the United States, but most specifically that comes from California because they know and believe that what comes from here is of the highest quality in terms of nutritional content and the things that it can do to help nourish their families. And I think Karen Ross understands those fundamentals, translates it into an enormous, enormously challenging uh, uh, responsibility that she has to oversee that department. But I think that her leadership is grounded in that and then wants to look at ways to embrace innovation about how we can scale up our production, can increase the quality in ways that we can even fulfill against that global promise of being one of the great food suppliers on planet Earth. Um, Secretary Caballero came in, also did uh, a, a wonderful job talking about her role, um, talked about partnerships, you know, mentioned specifically the partnership with, uh, with UC Davis, but I think that what you know out of 
Secretary Caballero is that her whole career has been about forging partnerships, understanding the critical importance of reaching into different places. Her and I were in a meeting not long ago, and it actually ties back to agriculture. Her and I were together down in the Salinas Valley just a few weeks ago, where she's from, uh, where I live near, and talking about the fact that few people know that Salinas Valley is the largest producer of fresh cut vegetables and lettuces and greens on planet Earth. And yet uh, their economy and their people, that it's just a stone's throw from the Silicon Valley, are often a world away from the Silicon Valley in terms of the economic pressures associated with everyday folks that are just trying to get by on that agricultural-based economy in that region. So we were there together talking about how can we fuse together the, uh, the global leading agricultural capacity in the Salinas Valley with the global leading innovation capacity in the Silicon Valley. How can we bring those together and meet that global opportunity that we were talking about before? And in so doing, how can we transform the lives of the people in that Salinas Valley? I think that's the kind of thinker she is as a leader, and it's a, I, I know that she related that to you all in her comments. Um, Joe Xavier was here, and he talked about uh, a number of uh, key things. I think he asked important questions that we should always think about in leadership. We should be creative and curious in the way that we think about leadership, talking about what are we not doing today? What are we doing today that we should do more of? What are we doing things today that we can do differently? I think having that critical assessment all the time of the type of leadership and approach that we're taking, being disciplined and determined, and frankly having the courage, right, to assess, are we doing this well? Are we doing this right? Are there ways that we could do this better? Uh, are there other ideas that I can get through other interactions, through other relationships, through other partnerships? Can I gain examples from things that may not be my subject matter, but just the way they're going about doing their leadership or managing their mission? What can I take from that? I think asking those critical questions, as Joe suggested that we do, um, is great advice as it relates to advancing our leadership. You heard from uh, our controller, John Chung. Uh, someone that I've had the pleasure of knowing since we were staffers on Senator Barbara Boxer's Senate staff a million years ago, and I've watched his incredible rise uh, as a great leader. Um, if I know John, I know what he did. He buried you all with numbers, because that's what he does to everybody when he talks. He's got, a, uh, he's got a mind like a computer for California's numbers. But when you know John and what you really see about him is that despite all the facts or behind all the facts and figures and all that that he has uh, is a person of just unbelievable integrity and determination to provide the best quality leadership uh, in anything that he does. And so um, he's, a, he's a wonderful figure that um, we were lucky to be able to have here as well. Uh, Gene Shimoda was here from uh, the DMV. You know, the DMV, I think, when you talk about embracing change, embracing innovation, uh, being willing to look uh, in a critical way internally and assess what are some of the challenges that we've had, but how do we use that as fodder and opportunity to innovate, embrace that challenge, uh, design new ways, go forward so that we can transform. You know, the DMV, as we all know, for a long time was a punchline, right? And the truth is that the DMV has not shied away from that. The leadership within that has not shied away from it. They have worked exceedingly hard to embrace new methodologies, embrace new technologies, find ways to change the nature of the way that organization operates and the culture within it. And the DMV is frankly doing some of the most innovative stuff in the California state government today and delivering a much higher quality experience to the people that walk in the front doors of all of their branches all across the state. Uh, I know she touched on that. She talked about even further reaching innovative things like uh, what Google is going to do with uh, autonomous vehicles and other things that will have to uh, fundamentally uh, require all kinds of new policy uh, approaches, a whole new uh, regime that can allow that type of innovation to occur, but to you know, obviously match it with our responsibility to ensure that we're looking after our citizens and the public safety, but we can do that. And, uh, and she talked about that, which I think is to her credit. Secretary Dooley was here. Uh, from health and human services. Uh, our health, our literal health and the business of health is something that's so vital to California. With Covered California, which we all know is the best implementation of the national health care program any place in the country, has happened right here in California, and that has a lot to do with the courage, the innovative approach, the challenge that the leadership uh, under Secretary Dooley took on to deliver against that. And we have much more to do in terms of health care, which is something that's transforming all the time. But I think by being innovative, being willing to take on that challenge, she's showing the way. And opening data is something that I know she talked about, something that I care about a lot, uh, and many people do too. There's so much data in government 
the more that we can open it, the more that we can expose it, the more that we can allow third parties, outside parties to leverage that information to convey it to the public in ways that is usable and can help enhance their lives because that information has real value. Secretary Dooley has been one of the great leaders in saying there are, there are lots of ways inside of her agency, lots of information that could be uh, exposed so that smart application developers and other solution providers can make that information public. Um, she's showing a lot of courage and a lot of creativity in her leadership there. And she deserves uh, credit for, um, for, uh, uh, for doing that, indeed. Um, a few other folks that were here, and then I'll just have a few comments of my own, and then I'm gonna, and then I'm gonna let you go. Secretary Gillarducci uh, was here from, or Director Gillarducci out of Office of Emergency Services. Uh, I have to tell you, he's been uh, tremendous. You, know, you think about the wildfires in California, you think about the, uh, the earthquake in Napa. Uh, I was a part of a, a, a large group of, of, of folks all across the government sitting on coordinating calls that Secretary Gillarducci was leading on a daily basis, keeping us all up to date. And I have to tell you again, for those of us that work in government, and we get criticized a lot, sometimes we deserve it, right? I mean, we're not perfect, and we have ways that we have to improve. But for the, when I was sitting on those coordinating calls, listening to all the different departments and agencies, the work that they were doing, the level of coordination that was happening, the way that we were responding to communities that were in real distress, following the wildfires and following that, that, that Napa earthquake, I swear to you I would hang up on those calls and go, you know, that is government at its best. That is government working and serving the needs of people at the most critical time. And I know that that's what Secretary Gillarducci is all about. You know, he talked a lot about accepting challenges by using your experience and using your judgment, making calls, doing what you have to do. And when there's a natural disaster and people are literally, their lives are depending upon your response, you don't get a chance to go ahead, conduct a study and come back in a year and see how it's going to work out. You got to use your experience, you got to use your judgment, you got to be willing to make calls, and that's what leadership really is. And I think Mark uh, definitely embodies that, and I'm glad he talked about that when he was here. Secretary Batcher overseeing government operations is someone who, uh, through her experience in the public sector and in the private sector, she embodies innovation and creativity. When I talk about open data, when I talk about modernizing the state's healthcare or uh, HR systems, when we talk about looking at DGS and the way that we procure and the way that we manage operations and facilities and services in this state, when we talk about how we're going to renew the workforce in government and bring in a whole new generation of people, people that are digital natives, people that are going to bring a whole new attitude and a whole new culture to all kinds of work, the way that she is making it attractive for those folks to come into government and use their capacity to serve the people of California is something where she's going to make an enormous, uh, an enormous mark on this state. And I know she talked about uh, the ways that she looks at leadership, and I can tell you the things that she's accomplishing in that regard are extraordinary. Carlos Ramos, that works for her, that oversees the Department of Technology, is right at the forefront of trying to figure out ways to innovate and create uh, new ways forward, specifically as it relates to technology. Um, Last but not least, just almost last but not least, James Waterman gave a, a really great talk, and Michael Wells uh, as, as well with, the, with CalVet. I had the great pleasure of being down at, v, uh, at Google. I was part of that meeting uh, just a few days ago, listening to the team from CalVet speak with incredible passion and determination and commitment to fulfill the mission that they all take so personally and so seriously. Those, what's the number, 1.8 million vets that are here in California? How do we reach all of those folks? I see the secretary here as well. Um, how do we reach those folks? How do we deliver against that mission? How do we partner potentially with someone as capable as Google? And how do we use the power of those platforms to think of a new way of reaching those veterans with the services and the information and the network and the support and the resources that they need to fulfill their life's promise, whatever that is? Some vets need lots of help. Other vets may not need not lots of help, but veterans all want to connect with other veterans. They want to be part of a thriving veteran ecosystem that's bringing as many resources as possible to sustain and, and support the health and the well-being of all of those folks that served our nation so bravely. And I think that what CalVet is doing in partnership with what James mentioned in his talk is something that could be transformative. And frankly, not just as it relates to delivering on the incredible, incredibly important mission of, of, um, of CalVet, but I think it could serve as a template for what's possible in government overall. And then Becca wowed us with the way that she talks about her vision for how we are, I mean, channeling Einstein is something I haven't seen done in the CalPERS that often, but, um, but she did a wonderful job and uh, continues to inspire us to think that we can do things differently. We can think differently. We can invert the old models. We can, uh, I love that line, we don't have to look at, we don't have to turn the world upside down. We can make it right side up. I think the government, 
that's our opportunity, right? And I'll close by simply saying that on the business and economic development side of California, what we have to do is we have to figure out ways to continue to inspire people on the business side, to be here, to invest here, to grow jobs here, to stay here. Um, but I can tell you that they're already inclined to do that. For the, for the reasons that we saw in the video are the reasons that people every single day when they think of a new business venture, uh, a new business they want to form or a new company that they want to go work for, immediately their first thought is if I could do that in California, that would be an incredible achievement. Still, pe people still believe that to this day. But we have to continue to make that true, which means that we have to embrace the challenge and we have to see through the potential of what was described in every single one of those presentations that I just tried to quickly rattle off and more. I think to the extent that we work together in government with private partners, nonprofit partners, embrace the notion that California still is a place more than any place on earth that has innovation capacity, that has creativity, that has courage and has the ability to integrate those things, to transform the way we deliver services and build our communities, build our businesses and create a quality of life that's second to none. As we continue to do that together, then we will create a business climate that will follow because it will bring the best and brightest on the planet to invest and grow our economy here. So thank you all very much for letting me do that recap, share this time with you, and I hope that you will go forth in the spirit of leadership and innovation and transformation uh, that we've all had the privilege of hearing so much about today. Thank you very much for being here.